Hey, good morning, options traders. Well, I was just speaking with a trader the other day, and he had a really good question, which I thought the rest of the group could benefit from. He was asking, can an options delta be greater than one? And you would think that the answer is no, because after all, if you have a call option, the very best you can do is exercise it into shares of stock, and shares of stock always have a delta equal to one. So how could a call options delta ever be greater than one? Well, the answer turns out to be, yes, it can, sort of. So let's go find out the details here. And before we do, as always, please be sure to click like and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated and helps to promote the channel. So quick review of Delta. Remember that there's a lot of these different Greeks that are sensitivity measures for our options. And Delta is the options sensitivity for a $1 change in the stock's price. And that's generally speaking, because technically speaking, Delta, really all of your Greeks, are for very small changes in the stock's price, fractions of a penny. But for practical purposes, we can say that it's for a $1 change in the stock's price. So for example, let's say we have a $100 call trading for three, and our broker's platform shows that the Delta is 60. Now notice it's a positive number, and that will always be true for a call option. And what that means is that it's positively correlated. So stock price up, call option up. Stock price down, call option down. It moves in the direction of the stock. So let's say that the stock rises from 100 to 101. Well, we would expect that this option will pick up 60 cents. And therefore, we would expect that call to be trading for about 360. Now, a better interpretation is to say that delta is a percentage. So we could say that it picked up 60% of the dollar move, which would still put us at 360. But what if the stock only went up 50 cents? Well, it would pick up 60% of that move, or 30 cents. And we would expect that that $100 call would be trading for 330. So that's the way that Delta works for the upside on a call option. Now, it's also important to understand that this is assuming an instantaneous change in the stock's price from 100 to 101. Because if it takes a full day or a week, well, obviously, that Delta is going to change if for no other reason because of the passage of time. So we always have to assume that this is for an instantaneous change. But let's say that on the flip side, that what if the stock falls from 100 to 99? Now we have a $1 fall. We would expect that this call would lose 60% of that dollar fall and should be trading for about $2.40. Now, put options work in the same way, same idea, but they're just opposite. So their deltas will always be negative. And so the way you want to interpret that is if the stock price is up, put prices down, moves in the opposite direction, stock price down, put price up. So if we see that our put has a delta of minus 60, and the stock is 100, and it makes an instantaneous jump to 101, we would expect that that put should be trading for about 240. Should lose about 60% of that $1 move. If the stock price falls a dollar to 99, you would expect that that put should pick up 60 cents or 60% 60 of that dollar fall and should be trading for 360. So that's what delta means, at least if we're just looking at it numerically. Graphically, it's easier to interpret and to see what's happening. Here's a risk graph for a $100 call. Remember, we get the bend right there at 100. And the black line is the profit or losses at expiration, whereas the red line is the current curve, current profit or loss diagram. Now on the black line, if you look at for all stock prices below 100, the delta is zero. It's just flat. And that means option has no value. If the stock is above 100 at expiration, you're on this black line and you have delta one because that call will be exercised into shares of stock. And again, stock always has a delta of one. So at expiration, we know that the call will have a delta of either zero or one. But that's not really all that interesting because you are, after all, at expiration. Really nothing you can do about it. 
So for trading purposes, delta becomes useful today. Let's say with maybe 30 days to expiration and you're on this red graph. So if we look at the slope or the angle of this red line, notice that it changes. Starting to get very flat down here as the option gets very far out of the money. If the stock price rises out this way, the red line starts to get steeper. So if you are at the money, again, this is a 100 call, let's say the stock is very close to 100, that delta should be very close to a half. But if the stock rises a little bit, maybe up here to 101 or 102, notice you're starting to get to a steeper part of the curve. And your broker's platform might tell you that now that call has a delta of 55. It's picked up some deltas. As the stock price rises further, maybe up here to 107, your platform might show that the delta has increased to 70. And the only time that it's going to get to delta 1 is way up here. So maybe the stock has to be at 120, and now we can see that the delta has hit 1. And you can see that visually because the red line is hiding behind the black line. You can't tell them apart. In other words, the call is trading just like stock. It's trading at parity, and so it's got a delta of 1. So it seems like that red line should never get steeper than 1. That was kind of the question. And so let's come back to the question. Can the delta exceed 1? Well, the answer is yes, but it's really an illusion. And that's because it's really due to implied volatility. So let's say that the delta is 1. That's what our broker's platform shows. The stock rises $1 right now, but we see that that call option rises $1.10. And you're going, hey, wait a minute, that can't be right, because I know that the call delta cannot exceed a dollar. Well, remember, whenever we're talking about Greeks, any of the Greeks, it's assuming everything else is constant. Time, stock price, volatility, interest rates, everything is the same. Well, evidently, everything wasn't the same. And in this example, volatility could also rise. And because the volatility increased, it simply appears that the delta was greater than 1. So, for example, let's go to a pricing model. Let's say the stock is 120, the strike is 100, interest rate 0, 10 days to expiration, volatility of 20%. And the pricing model, let's say, shows the $100 call trading for 20 bucks. It's trading at parity and therefore has a delta of 1. Now remember, parity means equivalence. It means that the call is equivalent to stock. And another way we can find that out is that if you paid 20 for this call and then exercised it and paid 100, you would pay a total of 120, which is exactly the price of the stock. There's no premium over and above the stock. So that's a very simple way to find out that this call really isn't even an option anymore. It's stock. And that's why it has a delta of 1. But now let's say that the stock rises from 120 up to 121. You would expect that this call would pick up a dollar and the call should be trading for 21. But you look at your broker's platform and you see it's trading for 21.10. And you're going, hey, wait a minute, that can't happen because the delta's only one. Well, again, what caused it to move more than a dollar was volatility. Now, granted, this is also going to be a very rare case because in order to have a delta of one, you either need to be very, very deep in the money if you've got a lot of time until expiration, or you need to be somewhat in the money if you don't have a lot of time until expiration. And so in both of those cases, the options are not going to be very sensitive to volatility because they're behaving more like shares of stock. And shares of stock do not have a sensitivity to volatility like an option does. So in this case, to push the option from 21 to 21.10, would require that the volatility spiked from 20% to 60%. And that would be really unlikely, not impossible, but normally volatility kind of ebbs and flows. It's usually kind of over a period of time that it will climb or fall. But 
Anybody who's been trading options long enough knows that this can certainly happen. Just will take one big piece of news and it could certainly spike that up. And if it does, it will appear that your delta was greater than one, but that's simply a misperception. It was a change in volatility. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a Candlesticks and Technical Analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find a link in the description below.